Hey, how are we doing? We are testing. So you will have to. Do we have audio now, I hope? <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, if your stream crashes, just reload the page. That should fix it. This is the new Amazon, or not Amazon, this is the new YouTube streaming, and it's uh, taken me a little bit of time to mess around and get used to it. I can see it crashed on the backside, too. I do not know why. Hopefully you guys can hear me now. Yes, audio, loud and clear. Okay, sorry about that. I'll be a little more prepared on the next one here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, welcome, welcome. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me just get everything back in order here. Uh, we got sound back. Everything should be good to go. Yeah, I'm sorry. It'll be a normal show next time. I'm sorry. I was just literally testing some things. If you go to, if you're in my Patreon page two, I did a live show in Patreon as a test just about an hour or so ago too. Everything's working fine for that in Patreon. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, let's see here. We're going to talk about uh, reselling info updates. I'm going to address some of the things that are selling right now actually selling very very well which i was really surprised uh nobleness d i ship everything with tracking because you have to with top rated plus status if i don't have tracking even on cheap items i won't keep my status <clears throat> has anyone had this problem i started listing vintage magazine ads and now sales in all my other categories plummeted the only thing people are buying from me are the vintage ads i would say you probably got all uh, not knowing what you have in your store people are buying collectibles like mad right now which i was really surprised that that was the case uh, i don't think i got my lighting quite right which i don't think i can fix right now <clears throat> i guess we will just leave it then for right now um, i'll address that later on in another next video uh, maybe that's why I lost my power seller. LOL. Yeah, you can't you can't keep power seller status without tracking on. I think it's what ninety seven percent or more. I go for a hundred percent. I just track everything. Uh, let's see here. Hear me fine. He is still sick. He's on day number four. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, Mark, collectibles hold their value. The only thing is some of them will be going down in value. I can tell you for sure right this very second. I've been watching the trends on everything right now, and things are going down sale prices, even compared to two weeks ago. So it's just going to depend on what you're actually selling as to uh, you know what's going to hold the value. Now, you can pull things off or just let them run high if it's items that you don't want to let go for a certain price. You know, that's always an option that you can do. Uh, we've done that for a while on some things. And you can archive certain items that you want to, you know, put aside and not mark down or not get confused with or anything like that. You can just pull them off your store if you really want to. We're just adding as much as we can right this moment. I don't have any employees, and I've got two. There's only two of us basically doing eBay right now, which is making us do a lot more stuff that we usually don't do so it's just been a really busy time frame it, everything was running real fine until my son got sick but you know i'm not going to panic we're just going to move forward it's going to end we got 10 more days of quarantine um so we're going to go from there and you know once we're on quarantine it'll be back hopefully um as long as the state still allows employment in the whole works too so just fyi uh, selling right now. Now, um, for those in Patreon, I did discuss this if you haven't seen the live one from earlier about an hour ago. 
in Patreon, a lot of folks hopped on hip and stuff. They did double the price to nine ninety five. I've had have brought this up before. If you do the year in advance, it's only seven ninety nine. So uh, just FYI on that one. And uh, with that, I've been selling. Geez, in just a ten day time frame, I've sold more than I usually sell all month in, in um, on hip platform. So. Sales are just going like man, and it's selling like vintage postcards, not high dollar ones. It's it's like five to say twenty bucks or so. I'm selling like way more than I've ever sold. I think in in any time frame I can think of that many all at once like that on that platform. So, you know, things are selling. I've sold a ton of sheet music. Um, records are selling. I sold a bunch of comic books even, mostly vintage. My newer stuff, my um, like NOS stuff, has almost died in some categories. Um, we're down like 24%, I think is what the total is in overall sales. I don't have any employees. So if I had employees, I'd still be listing and I don't think I'd be down at all right this second. <clears throat> Again, I'm not, it's not a brag or anything. It's just, just the way it's going. Some items have tanked and I stopped listing all of those items. I've totally cranked stuff around and moved things around and I'm not listing anything that's in certain categories now just to be safe. The collectibles were usually bought by people that were retired to begin with, so the money situation isn't the same for them. So that's why I would say some of the collectibles are still selling for the very same reason. They're still collectors, and they're going to buy either way. They're not working. They don't worry if their job is there or not. So, you know, that's what I see with, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what I see with, um, you know, sales going on. Because I've got way more sales than I ever thought I would, considering what's going on. Um, video games, even higher dollar, even stuff that's overpriced on like uh, Amazon was still selling. We sold a bunch of video games that I just put them up and forgot about them. Didn't care what the, you know, the price was for them or anything like that. So just FYI, you know, so stuff is selling. I know not for everybody. A lot of people may have issues right now. Again, it depends on what you're selling. You know, diversification and having quantity will help you. Uh, well, of course, so <clears throat> and we get the ones leaving the negative feedback all the time. <clears throat> I don't know why they watch. They come here just to leave the feedback. And I hope YouTube does instigate what they said, which means they'd have to watch 20 minutes of the video just to leave feedback. That's what they're working on. So people won't be able to do stuff like that. I would never wait for a notice, go to the video just to leave a negative. It's just stupid. But, you know, haters will be haters. <clears throat> well, let's see. we got some questions here. Uh, let me slide down. Hang on, my feed's already frozen up. I can say that I've had a spike in those related categories, but I think it's just more what's going at the moment. Yeah, I would say, as I said, vintage and collectibles are going and selling right this very second. So <clears throat> I haven't had any issues with worry on that right this moment. High dollar baseball stuff has sold. We had some Victorian stuff. Some guy who runs a museum bought a piece from us, and then he wants me to send him scans of all of the other ones or put a listings up for him with the other ones I have. So, you know, it'll be a good chunk coming in with that aspect of it, too. So I have sold more on eBay this week than I took in at my full-time printing business. Carolina Picks. That is very good. It just depends on what you sell. And Clothing I don't see selling a lot of. I've talked to a couple clothing people that just sell clothing. Uh, they've sold more on Poshmark than uh, that. And McCrary has been selling stuff. You know, they've been selling stuff on there as well, too, with homes. <clears throat> eBay gave out those free listings. That's what I saw, too. So, you know, I don't... If you don't have a store, you probably didn't get any. You know, I'm sorry. I, I wish they would have just done it for everybody. Uh, whether you have a store or not, I don't know what that would matter to eBay, you know, they're going to take a hit from this if sales don't keep coming in. This could be a big move to make people like them better by giving a bunch of listings to just everybody would have been my personal thought. You know, they want to be like Amazon. They say they don't, but everything they change steers towards an Amazon based structure. Even some of the new changes that just came out in the update are similar, like styling around Amazon issues. So, you know, with the, the catalog and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> that's why I say, it would have been the smartest thing just to give everybody free listings. You know, a certain amount. They're going to get a percentage off of them anyway. The listing fees like a drop in the bucket compared to final value fees and stuff. I, I just made no sense because I got a bunch of people telling me you know, I got nothing. And they're only doing it in the U.S. from what I see, too. I've had several people reach out to me from Australia and U.K. as well as a Canadian 
Hello, everybody. And um, <clears throat> literally none of them have the discount or have the free listings. This was honestly the first time I really got to take advantage of any of them. You know, we're saving just on the store I share with you over $800 this month because it's whenever anything relists, it's relisting under those 50,000 free. So they're only getting me for the first 10,000 listings for my uh, two ninety nine is what what we pay for you know the store level we got the anchor store per store level. So <clears throat> I would have been paying with twenty seven thousand listings for almost eighteen thousand listings at five cents a piece. It's like eight hundred and some odd dollars. I'm getting that for free now, which I am really surprised. I can't believe they honestly did that. You know because all it means is I roll into free listings. You know I'm sure a lot of people don't have as much quantity, so <clears throat> or they they're not even up to the ten thousand mark. So. I think they should have done something different, and that's just my take on it. But <clears throat> my daughter started a brand new account using tracking on all items, selling postcards for whatever they will sell for. Need to build up uh, <clears throat> ratings. Yes, my feet is frozen again. <clears throat> Hang on, I'm sorry, my throat's been sore. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hang on, let me, I had something I was going to look at. Yeah, you can't say that word there, Aaron. You, I got dinged for putting the word recession for, in a question mark on one of the videos. I had to remove it from the title, and they they didn't monetize it at all. No, no notice. I didn't check the email, nothing. Just because of that word in there. I don't, they don't want anything negative coming in. You know, so it's got to be uh, very specific on the titles on the videos. This is like the third time they did it over some stupid word. Uh, online restaurant liquidation auctions are a great sourcing venue for me right now. JC, yeah, I have done some of those as well in the past. We used to go in, I worked restaurants, so I used to go in with some uh, two other people and we'd buy the entire thing out, the whole restaurant, and then we'd split it up ourselves. You know, I'd take IT and stuff like that. Somebody would take the restaurant equipment and, you know, structural equipment like, uh, you know, counters and coolers and freezer equipment and chairs and register systems, POS systems and all of that kind of stuff. That those that's good money. We used to sell like uh blades from some of the industrial mixers and some of those blades are like five and six hundred dollars just for the paddle blades and stuff to make like dough and stuff. So I always look for those. Even like a mixing bowl, excuse me, for an industrial mixer, a good one could cost you like twelve hundred dollars. You know, we're talking mixers, though, that may cost 30 grand for a mixer. The big floor ones, they're stand about five feet tall, six feet for some of the bigger ones. They got heating pots just like that. I've used it all in the restaurant industry. <clears throat> I'm so glad I don't work in the restaurant industry, though. They'll be drinking the hatered. Yeah, I got you. They're creative unique. I try to not to worry about it because it's just too many people that, um, for whatever reason, I don't understand why anybody would just, you know, be part of a group. Obviously, I just sent out notices, and as soon as I send out the notices, I get the uh, the thumbs down. So people are just watching just to give thumbs down. I mean, it's just such a waste of your time. I got so much better things to do than go to somebody's channel to click a thumbs down. I'm sorry, but that's just a waste. Electronics and some jeans of all things. Yeah, I'm surprised. D electronics, it depends. From what I see, DVD players have been selling. Um, gaming systems have been selling. You know, and I'm talking quantity-wise. And you can go and, and check trending. You can also check rankings on, on Amazon to see where stuff has moved. You can compare. You can go back and look at prior days' rankings and then compare them to the current time. And you can kind of see the difference right off the bat. There's many ways to do that kind of thing. There's services. And I'm sure anybody who does the FBA knows exactly how to pull those up. So I'm not going to go to big details. A lot of people here may not do Amazon like us. So just FYI. Any advice for scanning postcards? I bought four scanners and all linen postcards scan and tinted very yellow. Is this common? I have not. I have a DS510 uh, duplex scanner. I've got two of the same ones. I have not had a single postcard ever, single anything, look different or odd or anything else like that. I mean, I've even accidentally forgot a staple and it ran through without scratching the glass and scanned the piece with a staple without any issues. I'm really surprised. Um, there's a newer version which most people buy. They're all the same to me. They almost look identical. There's some structural differences maybe, and then maybe Wi-Fi or not. <clears throat> I just plug it into whichever. I can plug it into the server so uh, it can stay all of it can save all the files in the server, or we'll just hook it up to a laptop and then save everything to an SD card, and that way it can go anywhere. Because I got a lot of different computers and laptops, you know, enough for nine people. 
So, you know, you've got to have a, a way to, you know, cross them out. But the DS510, that's an Epson. Uh, I've never, never, I bought mine used for like 100 with all the paperwork, cords and everything on eBay, the first one. And the second one I think I got off of, um, maybe it was New Egg or something like that. I used one from there too, I think. It was something like that. But they were both around 100 bucks. I think maybe 75 for one and 100 for the other. New wise, they're around 500, if I'm not mistaken. Most of the duplex scanners I see um, say they do the same thing, but I don't know. I've just had so much good luck with the Epson. And the other scanner I showed you um, as well, the 600, um, I'm not even sure what it's called, V600 Photo. That's the one I use for slides and stuff. It uses the same software and the same program, so you only have to download one thing. All you're, I think, downloading extra to add one or the other one on is the Twain um, script so it can pull in the information between the printer and the actual app itself. I guess you, basically a driver for those who um, want to know. That's the one that I have. I have not seen anything tinted yellow whatsoever. You can go in if it's doing it to all of yours. You can adjust the color in there if you go to... Um, what is it setting? What's the setting? I think it says professional. You can pick the version of it you want. Um, and then you can adjust the color, if I'm not mistaken, on there. I've never had to do that on there. I'll, I'll dig in there and just see. I know with, like, the flatbed, it's to the T. I mean, I really haven't had a problem with either one. Are, have you tried, the JC, have you tried the uh, DS510? Uh, let me know on that somewhere down in here. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. Hey, Andrew. Ah, oh, there goes my feet again. I was just at a question, and the feed happens to disappear. If I miss calling you out, I do apologize. I'm trying to get to some questions here. Hey, Carl. J&J, &J, how are you two doing? Hope you two are doing well. Um, for J&J, &J, flipping a couple here. We didn't go to that flea market. Someone at that flea market got the virus and is in the hospital, from what I understand, including one of my pickers. So I am so glad we didn't go to it. I can't say that's where they got it from, but... A lot of people were there, from what I understand, so I'm glad we did not go to any of those last couple uh, flea markets. Uh, anyway, again, I'm don't not trying to snub anybody. If I miss your name, I do apologize. Hey, Karen, how are you doing? Uh, hang on. I just had something. Uh, let's see. I'm hoping everyone is well. Thank you, Andrew. I am doing okay eBay-wise, but my sales are down. Yeah, that's so why I said mine are down 24% roughly right now. It might be a little off from that because I've gotten a few more sales in just in the last little bit here. Sales-wise, the amount of items are still fairly decent for us right now. The value on some categories has went down. As I said, though, high-end stuff still seems to be selling. If you've got a high-dollar you know, um, slabbed comic book or a stamp or a slabbed coin or something. All those seem to be actually going up in some categories, which makes a little bit of sense because the well-to-do are using those in investments. The stock market is not stable right now, um, and gold and silver is fairly unobtainable. We stopped selling it, a month, well, it's more than a month ago, We've a couple months ago, so I've stockpiled some gold and silver just in case. You know, I do that. We, we only sell it now every once in a while. In fact, I was set to go and do a video not too long ago, but the virus and all, we were kind of hesitant, and we didn't go out, and I've been saving um, gold filled. We were going to go back and see Ed again with some gold filled, but that's not going to happen right now because he's not opened anyway. So just FYI. Uh, let me see here. Where are we at? The phone app looks different from eBay. I, I never use the phone app, Mary Beth. Um, we've got too much quantity, I guess I, I should say, to do anything on a phone. It just it would no way be practical, and I hate using the phone for stuff. I'm not a big cell phone person. I mean, I've got one for necessity, and I've got one for research on the go, but I, I don't care about, you know, I'm using a phone app. Uh, laptops are the way to go because I can do so much stuff. I can run, you know, three or four different uh, tabs open and, you know, cut and paste on several different sites and things like that all at the same time. Or, you know, I can run um, with uh, Shopify, which is, I wouldn't want to do that from the phone either. Uh, part of that's on hold too, just because I don't have help right now. Uh, let's see here. They want to get a lot of new store subscriptions from hoping they get the next 50K. That could be, but I don't. I don't honestly think that's it. I just don't think they're thinking at all. I, that's that's my opinion. I I think they're 
they're not sellers. None of the people that run eBay or have much to do with what goes on in eBay are sellers at all. I don't think they get it. They're in their sheltered world. They make, you know, a ton of money. A lot of the upper echelon there, which are who makes the the decisions. They don't have to worry about any of the stuff that we got to worry about. They don't have to worry about that at all because they get a paycheck and they're still getting bonuses. Even if the company doesn't do well, they still get multi-million dollar bonuses. Not just eBay, but all of them. You know, so I just think they're just not thinking and, you know, I would have just given them to everybody who wants them, you know. I know the, the their aspect on, you know, offering 50K uh, listings to somebody who's new, though, you, you can't use them off the bat. So that doesn't make, a, you know, that I, that's why I say it's not the reason. Because you can only get so many to start off with. You're in like a, a limbo, like, um, you know, a trial, trial version, basically. You can't just list a whole bunch. They're going to hold your money and all this other stuff. So I just don't see as them, you know, trying to get your store subscriptions off of that at all. I just think they should offer like 500 free listings or whatever based on how many listings you have up now, you know, an equal amount. Nobody in their right mind is going to be able to list 50,000 listings a month in the first place. I can't do that, you know, because you sell so much of those and, you know, you've got time into it and photos and there's just no way. You know, I mean, for me, all it does is give me free money right now, and I don't have to worry about anything I list. Of course, we can't list as much again because I don't have any employees, and so we've got a nine platforms, and all the other stuff I do is run between two of us now, and that's it. Because I've got, you know, one sick and then somebody else helping that sick person. So, uh, anyway, I've been listing uh, like crazy since I got free listings. Yeah, I wished I could. I really do. I wish that's just not feasibly possible. I haven't got hardly any listings up. So I say I'm down, but I probably wouldn't be down if I could list more. You know, it's it's a toss up here. Uh, they like down. People like hating on me. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Don, you truly, are, well, thank you for that nobleness. D, for vintage knowledge combo with eBay, who else can I even say that? Well, thank you very kindly, nobleness. D. Uh, again, for those in Patreon, there is a 50 minute or plus uh, live show that's available for you uh, that was shot just before this live show, as well as some information. There's a bolo for you guys, too. Um, that's something totally new for you guys, so I, I don't mean to address it here, but uh, it was unplanned, just kind of happened, and um, it worked fine. So we're going to do some more. Uh, I got the 50,000. We'll not get that many listings up, but any little bit helps right now. That's exactly right. That's why I say give, give out 500 to anybody who's got an account that's been on and is basically ungated out of the whole period. Just give them the 500 listings and let them go. You know, it just doesn't make sense not to allow people. Everybody's home now. eBay would do, they could get a ton of revenue in if they gave away a bunch of listings right now because everybody would be trying to do it. Yeah, it might flood some categories, but depending on what you're doing. Again, I, I always say vintage is always good. I have not had much of a drop, even with this going on. 24% is not bad considering I have nobody listing hardly right now. If you list every day, you're going to get list. You're going to sell something out of that every single day. At least that's my take on it. That's what I get out of listing every day. And, and there's probably half a dozen people will tell you that right now in the, in the listings or in the, the feed right now. Uh, let's see here. Let's get down to some more questions. Uh, let's see here. I was personally shocked and had to give them a little credit for actually pushing selling fee payments out 30 days. They don't typically have any leniency on selling fees. Yeah, that's a double-edged sword, though. A lot of people won't be thinking that, hey, you know, I'm going to have to pay that in 30 days. And, you know, at the end of this 30-day period, you're going to have two months' worth of listings. And if stuff isn't selling, it could get you into a little more trouble where they might want to shut down your account because you don't have the fees being paid on a timely basis because that's going to put it 60 days out. You're going to constantly be 60 days out. When this ends, you know, when they stop doing that, you're, all those fees are going to come due. So, I mean, that's my concern uh, on that. The, their nicest thing they should have done was just do free listings. I mean, just flat, just free listings, everybody. If you got a store fee, maybe don't charge you the store fee and just go off from there. I mean... It's not going to kill the company. It's going to put more more people listing. You know, everybody's not the same items. Nobody can source, so it's going to be limited push either way. You know, even if if I could list all what I have, I'd I'd go over to fifty thousand. You know, but I don't have the ability to list that. It takes a good year to get up to fifty thousand listings. You know, no matter how much help you have in some aspects, if you're selling stuff constantly. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Duncan, how are you doing? 
I saw I got some text from you. I'm I'm not trying to snub you, Duncan. I did accept that one. Um, I just literally things have been just hectic for the last five days, Duncan. So I do apologize. Duncan's a real good guy. He's got a Facebook group too. I think it's with Aaron, if I am not mistaken. Uh, let's see here. How are sales? They are still great here as long as the post still is going. I keep selling. Yeah, I'm. I would love to list more. So I'm. I've got ten day time from here till things can hopefully pick up. If everybody else is still safe to come over, uh, Mary Beth, uh, specific postcards to some extent, vintage ones, of course. Um, 1910 is like the heyday of postcards, and that's when a large majority, 1910 to the 20s. Um, China, uh, Duncan will tell you anything China sells. I've sold China stuff throughout this whole thing. In fact, I missed a purchase on some China stuff just the other day on a on a uh, online thing on another site and I was kind of frustrated but China stuff is selling at top dollar top dollars no discount whatsoever given even with what's going on in China I have no problem selling anything China that I list up really quickly uh, and I mean quickly I mean it's out the door as soon as it's listed if I had a thousand China things probably 800 of those would be gone in the first day or two if they were good stuff it's just a, it's a given RPPCs are the best, of course. Uh, train stations, that whole works. There's just so many postcards that sell. Right now, I'm not selling the high dollar ones, other than China and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's some of the lower grades. I think it's just collectors just occupying time, and they spend a few bucks here, a few bucks there. You know, there's not a lot to do if you can't go out. A lot of folks like us would go out and walk and do stuff like that too. And they're trying to keep you away from the parks. So I was hesitant. We were gonna go out uh, before this all happened, the the lockdown, but. Uh, you know, didn't get a chance to do much. We did do a night walk down the river, but oh, let me pop down here if this isn't getting lost. Yeah, Bob shouted that out too, the DS510. Bob's got the same one, yeah, and, and loves it too. Again, I, I don't remember the number of the other DS scanner, um, but the 510 is fine. Um, and, and, and some of the other folks have a newer version of one of those scanners. And a couple of um, people have had uh, different types of issues. One of the issues was on thin stuff, it left a roller mark down the middle of the ads. I think the person I discussed that with is on the show now, so I'm not going to call it any names. But um, this is someone in the Patreon group. But um, I've not seen that anywhere else. And another person had some issues with it not pulling Again, not the same version I have, um, not pulling cards properly. Because you can stack like 10 or 15 postcards on there and it'll just do, 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 do one after another one. I don't stack them. Because um, sometimes if you stack them, I've, I've learned through doing tens of thousands of things through that, that it'll uh, it messes with the edges of them. So what we do is we manually feed them as quick as you can go through it. And you can adjust the speed by adjusting the DPI. If you raise the DPI, the speed they go through the scanner is going to be slower. So just FYI, if you want to speed through there, just drop the DPI down. I use 600 DPI for everything, whether it's a photo, a scan, the flatbed, everything. I use 600 DPI because then when you zoom in on the page, you know, when you hover over it, it'll show a larger one. The details are so crisp. I do a lot of smaller items, stamps, coins, cards, and things like that. So 600 DPI is what I use. Um, and three, if you drop it to 300 DPI, it's still going to look pretty good either way. Most people won't know this difference, but I do other things with some of the images. So I just always have it 600 DPI because I can use, use it for art that way too in projects that I do. A lot of the images on some of the vintage postcards are uh, copyright free at this point, public domain. So, you know, I've talked about public domain as well on, on a video just the other day. So, and that was a question in Patreon that we talked about for a little bit today too. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Penny, how are you doing? Good evening. Uh, let me slide down here. So I'm getting quite a few conversations here. Uh, that's exactly what me and my partner are doing. We are going on with restaurants at the moment. Seems like the typical restaurant industry is staying away from the auctions completely. That could very well be... I know you can look up all those online. I'm not going to give out that information. And, you know, um, I've discussed those in occasion before. We've been heavy into buying local businesses that go on. It doesn't have to be restaurants per se, but restaurants, I know every, again, I, I worked in restaurants for 20 years and I've touched every piece of machinery you can imagine in a restaurant, whether it be a, a fine dining, because we did that at Disney or, or sit down, whatever it is, I've worked in every style of restaurant. I worked for 20, 20 years of my life. We were doing eBay part of that time as well, but 
I know what the equipment's called. I know where to track down prices. So, I mean, people won't notice what a spring is for like a cup retractor. I know all that stuff. I know the, the rings for the cup retractors. I know the robo soda machine pieces and parts and levers. Because when you go and buy like a whole building, you're going to end up in the back and they're going to have boxes of parts to repair stuff so they don't have to wait for, you know, maintenance and stuff to show up. I had parts, extra parts for everything. I had, you know, thermostats and knobs and all just all kinds of stuff. And knowing what all that stuff is, is, is a huge plus because you can... Again, I buy cheap stuff. If we don't buy out the whole place, I'll buy out the stuff that most people won't be messing with. I'm not going to buy a whole mixer because I'll have to worry about creating shipping and storage. I'll buy the paddles. I'll buy the accessories. I'll buy the, the tools, the parts. Um, there are some pieces that you know most people won't think of that cost a lot of money that don't look like anything in a restaurant industry, I'll tell you right now. And those are the pieces I always go for. I had to order those new. I, I'm the one who had to track them down as running a restaurant or as a regional. And in some cases, I would buy them for several stores at a time to get bulk purchasing. So I've done all the calls. I know who to call. I still have catalogs. I still have friends in the industry who supply me information. So if I need to find current value on a paddle from a Hobart, you know, 1200 mixer or something i can just do a quick call and he can give me a paddle price you know that's like a dough piece you know i said that earlier today too but restaurant stuff is the bomb i mean uh, one thing of working in the restaurant industry for 20 for 20 years is i know the equipment I, I can take it apart i can fix the pieces as a restaurant manager you were controllable so if if i spent a lot of money on repairs or had to call somebody to the store that hits my bottom line instantly I pay the whole fee, and a maintenance guy for restaurants is pretty expensive. Most of the time we had one on call, and I, I was billed for his labor. So I learned to fix anything I could in the restaurant, and I encouraged my employees, assistant managers, not regular employees, but the assistant managers to fix or call another manager who might know how to fix something before you ever call maintenance, unless you have no other choice but to call maintenance. So I learned how to take these things apart. You know, um, I take stuff apart all the time. I'm not afraid to do that. And usually you can make more money taking something apart than selling it as a whole almost any day of the week. Maybe a VCR, something like that's a different story. But, I mean, I'll put in a belt in a VCR, you know, because a belt in a VCR is very easy to do if you've done a few of them. And a belt is like a... You can get a belt for a VCR for like three bucks shipped from China. Not right now, but in a normal day, you can get them U.S. for five or six bucks. If you took that in to have a VCR repaired, it wouldn't be worth repairing because you can buy them for the same price. But for a few bucks in about five or ten minutes, I can repair stuff like that. Walkman, easy to repair. The 99% of the issues I've ever found with the Walkman, the old Sony cassette Walkmans, is the belts. I bought a pack of belts, and it's a random size mix of them. It's got like a hundred of them in there for like six ninety nine, and we've repaired I don't know how many um, Walkmans. You know, that's just another thing that you can do. Like the big boom boxes, almost all the time when the cassette players go out with the boom boxes, it's the the belts. They're all like little rubber. It's like a real thick rubber band basically, and I've learned to mess with those only because I used to mess with stuff for my own money you know if you can save money and fix something yourself you make more money for yourself you know if i went over and budget for repairs in the store i wouldn't make you know twenty percent of my bonus and that's a lot of money when you know bonus might be ten thousand dollars for a three month period or in some cases after katrina we had bonuses that were in the twenty five thousand dollar range every three months on top of your base salary just because we were bringing in so much money you know, things are different. And again, not bragging. I would, wouldn't want that at all for anybody's life because restaurants is just, God, you're a slave to the industry. And I don't mean any disrespect by that term, but, you know, you're at their beck and call. You're not hourly. You're a salaried person. So they tell you you work 80 hours or you have to work 80 hours to fix your store. You got to do it. And then you've got, as a general manager in a store, your assistants rely on you to make sure the numbers get hit. So if you don't hit the numbers, they don't get their money either. So you're you're kind of locked in by trying to support your own staff and trying to appease the company and then trying to appease your own pocketbook by getting your bonuses. I know that kind of went along about there, but uh, if you haven't hit the like button and you are enjoying the conversations, please hit the like button for us. I know it's not something really huge or spectacular to hit that button, but it does help the feed and the channel. I've had quite a few of the live shows demonetized for whatever reason. I don't get what's going on, why just a word and a title that has nothing to do with anything is, but... 
You know, YouTube's been really screwy lately, and, and uh, it takes forever to challenge one of their uh, demonetizing. But anyway, let's see where are we at here. Um, how's the stamp stamps and postcards? Like I said, if you have a slab stamp, a slab coin, a slab comic book, um, slabbed anything pretty much, baseball cards right now, they're still selling like hot. They're 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 like top of the line right now. Again, because the stock market. Let, let's let's talk about this just for a second here. To for those who aren't into high end collectibles or haven't dealt with them or don't understand comic books and stuff, to say, a slab comic book alone costs a lot of money to have slab. Slab means it was graded. CDC or some, one of these companies is going to grade it. It doesn't matter. There's like 10 or so different companies. There's some that are better than others. They charge you to get them graded based on the value of the book. So if it's an expensive book, it's expensive to get it slabbed. But what a slabbed copy of a comic book can do, let's say if it's on slab, they sell for 100 bucks on eBay. You could see a slabbed High grade 9.6, 9.8 comic book. Dom talks about this. Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter talks about this a lot. I do the same thing. I just don't talk about certain items on my channel. Just just personal opinion. I don't give away some secrets. I do love comic books. I, I love them very well. Let's just put it that way. More so than you would ever know. And when they're slabbed, that $100 comic book in a 9.8 could go for eight ten thousand dollars $10,000. Now, these aren't necessarily always just high-end collectors, a lot of the people are investing from Wall Street in stuff like this. They see the difference and they've moved themselves into this. Coins are always on people's portfolios in some areas because if they're gold, they almost never go down the gold coins. Right now, gold is up. You know, it's, it's up really well right this moment. Look at the charts for the last 18 months on gold, if you're curious. I watch all this kind of stuff because I do play in all these fields. I'm not a person that's big on stocks. We own some because I work for Disney and you got them as a purchase thing. I work with PayPal. We sold it. We've got some in electric companies and stuff because that's where my father-in-law worked and stuff like that. So I'm not a huge stock person. I'm no way anything on a Wall Street investor in any way, shape, or form. I've got minuscule compared to anybody, really. It's more like play stuff. But um, the, the, the point of it is a lot of folks who are trying to sink money into stuff seem to be buying into collectibles in certain areas. Stamps are an area that certain stamps just never go down. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into specifics. We will touch that on. I've talked about in some other uh, some of my patrons, but stuff like that doesn't go down. Baseball cards, high end investors invest into that kind of thing as a investment. Having a comic graded or buying a comic book that was graded five years ago could be worth five times what it was five years ago now, even with the market. And that's why people are, are taking over. If anybody knows what Dragon Con is, Dragon Con's in Atlanta. It's a big, huge get-together. It's a cosplay event. Everybody goes there. Um, I'm a big Adam Savage fan. Uh, I watch all his making videos and stuff. It's, it's uh, you know, he's from... Um, Oh, shoot. I can't think of the name of the show. Somebody's going to say I'm stupid for not remembering that, but I can't remember the name of the show. Um, but but the point is that everybody goes to Dragon Con. It's turned into commercial con. You know, big corporations have come in and there, and it's hard for even a small guy to come out there and set up anymore. Same thing for Comic Con in San Diego. Same thing happened. The big corporations and movie theaters have come in and taken over. This used to be like a little of, not little, but an event for like nerds like me and comic book lovers like Dom and stuff like that to come in there and just get a real interesting experience. Now it's so packed you can't even get around. And they're, they've they come in there and turned in these hobbies into investments now. And, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, that's part of the reason why I see these certain categories are not dragging at all. You know, and I, I pay attention to this because it, it makes me money. Um, in the video I just had the other day, I talked about you know, watching what you take for items. Now, I'm not. Somebody made a comment, and no disrespect, I didn't. I didn't take it as that. That um, it, don't want it to be a race to the bottom. This isn't a race to the bottom. This is a, a re status of where the prices are now compared to where they were a month ago. You know, prices um, fluctuate and you have to address. That's why I've said many, 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 many times. You've got to constantly be looking at your store. Um, let's say you got a brick and mortar store. A brick and mortar store, every night before that store closes, they front face the shelves. Every single night in every single store in the country, they should be fronting and facing a store. And, and they work it throughout the day. They stock up. They put stuff in. They move stuff around. They'll get price changes a couple times a week. This is every store. Gas prices go up and down every day, sometimes three and four times in the day. 
you got to do that with your online store. And too many people, yeah, I do say forget, put it up and forget about it. But I do go back in and check things out from time to time. I'll do category searches and things like that and, and judge on it. I'll have key things that I know that if this one item goes down, I got to check that category. So, you know, I guess that maybe it's, it's, it comes into play from doing this for a long time. But, you know, I still follow the same structures from working in brick and mortars as a, as a regular employee, as an assistant, as a general manager, and then as a regional was my last spot. So I, I still think of everything in this online industry as, you know, the same structure, the same things I need to do that I did in brick and mortar, I need to do here too. And, and you got to constantly be on your store, constantly. So now that it's just a couple of us here doing this, I've got screens, I've got multi-tabs open on every laptop, including this one, with, you know, like um, offers to watchers is always opened, at least a couple screens, so anybody can hit it right away. Um, that's that's big one. That's a big one everybody should have on. I'm selling probably 10, 15% of our sales right now, every single day are coming from offers to watchers, every day. And I'm hammering those constantly. I'm offering a little less than I normally would have. But again, you guys know I price up high, so I'm still getting more than most people are. So if I price three times, I offer them a 50% discount, they think it's great, I'm still selling it over what they're selling for. So it's not a race to the bottom. It's just reevaluating where the sales, you know, have fallen or where they're going at this point. Some items you may need to raise. So again, it's not all about raising. It's not trying to be race to the bottom. It's trying to fluctuate, you know, with the prices as they fluctuate. Um, one other thing too, and I don't want to call out, you know, names or anything like that. Um, we are, sh I do, I am, there is somebody sick in the house and we are still sending out items at this point. Um, and I looked into this very, very, very heavy uh, before we made any decisions. There's no anything that says that it, w it can be transferred in the mail. And we've talked about this in, in Patreon earlier today as well. There are some UV that kill it. And I was told that the post office does UV them here. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I'm going to ask somebody to hear at the station. Because I know they send them on belts and they literally can physically, or they do take a picture of every label as they go through the system. So they can physically track them and tie those down to the the um, scans. Again, this is I've seen scans of package faces from the post office, so I know to some extent they do that. So if they're scanning them with some side of UV that kills this, it may be a moot point to even worry about it. None of the other countries, including China, have ended theirs, and they're still not having issues with it, you know, and they're monitoring it. I just read the post office right after I got off with the Patreon show before this show to double check what they're saying. You know, they're taking precautions and stuff, with me, if we get something in, I'll just spray it down with Lysol on the outside of the box and then, you know, go from there and wash my hands after it's out. Um, I'm not going to worry so much on sending them out. There is no way, um, there is no real way for me to add a post saying anything to eBay. So I don't know. The, the CDC is not warning and not saying there's any risk from postage or anything like that. So I am, you know, as the benefit, I have followed what the CDC says for shipment and everything else. You know, we're putting gloves on here, too. So just FYI, I've got boxes of them. In fact, there's one right there of latex gloves. I've got tons of them here because I use them. These aren't the medical. These are latex for art supplies and stuff. So just FYI, they're not medical grade. I do a lot of art and stuff. And with the casting, you've seen me wear gloves in my art professor videos, too. So anyway, I do have some videos coming out this weekend since I can't do a lot of else. I do have some more videos coming out. You'll see us on the other one. Um, some other things going on as well, too. Um, I've had some calls for a bolo video, so tomorrow is going to be a bolo video. I've been hesitant to do too much bolo videos because I don't want to offend anybody. I know a lot of people can't sell. You can't source. Um, I don't want to be putting out content that, you know, may, you know, have people thinking that, you know, what are they going to do? Um, I, I feel for everybody. I've been at the bottom rung for, you know, part of my life and, you know, I completely understand. I've lived in a spot where I haven't had food or anything or didn't know where it was coming from. So, you know, I, I you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation all around because a lot of people aren't, you know, working at all. The only thing I can say is as a reseller, if you've been doing this for a little while, you've have the basic skills 
Um, you know, and there's always something in your house you can sell. It's probably worth something that you don't care about or you haven't used in a year or something like that. So you have a plus on that. And since you're already a seller, anybody trying to get in eBay now is going to have to go through that hold period for money. You know, they're going to hold accounts and all this other stuff for payments and everything else. You're going to be limited. So, uh, you know, this might be the, the only surviving factor for, for a lot of people is being able to sell online right now, you know. Uh, you know, it's 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 going to be a trying time. It's not a time to panic because it's not going to do you any good. And it is going to get better. You know, we've I've had people talk and make comments, you know, it could be two years from now before this settles out. I, I don't see that, you know, but it, there's going to be a long process to grow back everything back up. That's the point. So you've got time now. You know, reselling is going to change to some extent and it could change for the better. Again, because, you know, people are still going to be hesitant out in public, certain age groups, certain groups in general, and there's going to still be more people probably buying online now than ever. And those who didn't have accounts before this may realize now that, wow, I can get all this stuff online and I don't have to worry as much about the store. So this could be a boost for a lot of us. You know, I'm not wishing any ill harm again. Oh, God forbid. I don't wish that on anybody. But it, it there, there's always a silver lining to most things to some extent. I would never want anybody to be harmed or hurt to increase anything. So don't take that that way. This is going to end. And just part of this natural progression of what's happening could lead to more people shopping online instead of going out in general. You know, who knows? Uh, 20 years ago, nobody thought that the internet was going to be what it is now. You know, who knows what it's going to be in 20 more years as, you know, brick and mortar struggle. Again, I'm not saying that's a good thing because I miss finding good stuff at stores like clothing. I, I can never find a t-shirt I even like, you know, for those of you who are out there. Let's get to some questions here. I know I ramble along a lot. Um, I, I don't, we're going to go. I don't care how long we are today, I guess, at this point, you know, unless my throat starts to bother me anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, Duncan talking about stamps is the last one, and I'm gonna lose where I was at because my feed is froze. Oh, there we go. Where we can sell, um, I'm not messing with selling masks. You're on your own on that one there. I wouldn't even recommend it at all at this point. People do need them. I would personally um, ask a hospital or something if they need them and donate them. If I had masks, I would give them to the local hospital. Truthfully, personally, that's exactly what I would do. I don't have a single mask in this house other than masks for working for, um, um, what do you call it, um, dust particles for a garage. It's the only masks we have. I didn't buy any. I didn't rush out to get them. I figured the people that need them the most would need them. I had a chance to buy thousands of them a month and a half ago. I refuse to do that because I won't mark up anything like that. And, you know, my statements from a month ago are out there. People criticized me then. Now you can't do that because it's been banned and the government has been sending people to court and there's a somebody's going to jail right now if you're paying any attention. So for those who are telling, saying that that video I did was BS and no one's going to get in trouble, that's not the case at all. There's a hotline in every state right now and they are being reported and the state is sending the police out there confiscating, closing, shutting and charging. Truth. So, you know, take it as you wish. I don't ever wish with a child who has a pre-existing condition as I do, I would never, ever, ever, ever um, Rick, uh, go to profit on something like that, ever. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what you think about me for saying that. Capitalist, not capitalist. That's not proper in my book. So if you do it, that's fine. I just can't do that. You know, I'll get hate for that. I guarantee it. Yeah, Aaron's got another point, and that is a, was a topic going to be of the video that I was going to put out tomorrow. Great time to, to trim expenses. Now, I tell people this, and I've said this for since the two years I've been on YouTube here. It's going on two years, I think. I don't spend a dime unless I have to. So don't buy anything unless you have to. And that's how I do it even without this going on. That's why my expenses aren't so, so bad no matter what. You know, cut down anything you don't need. If you don't need you know, Netflix or Hulu or Prime or whatever you don't use enough, get rid of it. You know, there's enough public domain movies. There's enough stuff online you can watch. There's enough on YouTube you can watch. Cut your expenses at all costs. Turn off every light in a room you're not into. Lower the heat settings down to 65 degrees. You know, whatever you can. This is stuff we do all the time. 
you know you don't have to go out and buy you know devices to shut off everything but lower your cost Aaron is 100% right but you should be doing that every single day of your life you should be thinking about that eventually you won't ever have to think about it because you will fixed or found every way you could save money you know turn off stuff when you're not using a lot of devices use electricity when they're not even on if they are plugged in so just I know this is, seems petty and stuff like that you can cut 50 bucks a month off by saving on electricity that's 600 bucks a year for some people that's a month's worth of rent you know and if you do that for your whole life all this stuff business and everything you'll be surprised at how much money you can save I do artwork as you know I have the art professor channel my other channel here on YouTube I do a lot of pencil work and some of the pencils I use cost six seven bucks a pencil I finally found uh, these they're like extensions so I can use a pencil now to very end it may not sound like a lot but it saves me hundreds of dollars a year in pencils you know a, a tape buying certain tape buying a couple cases at a time I can cut I, I bet you my tapes probably cheaper than most people have you know that they purchase tape for because I hunt around as long as it meets the two inch the the mill specs 110 meters 36 rolls per case I'm pretty fine with whatever seems to come in same with my one ply bags or my two ply bags I buy the cheaper ones I don't have any brand loyalty I have a price loyalty the cheaper I can get anything the better it is for me every dime that you don't spend on something is another dime that you get to earn it goes in your pocket why wouldn't you be penny pinching your business micromanage it it's your business it's your money why waste it and give it to somebody else I use everything up to the very end of everything everything I can save anything I can do anything I can reuse anything I can make myself or construct or order from some other source I do that that's what you're supposed to do and I do that because that's how I've always done business when I work for somebody else the more money you saved the bigger bonus you got and if you could bring in these figures below a certain point you get like 1.10 or a 10 percent higher so you get 110 percent of your bonus so I could get more than I supposed to have up to a certain point and then in some some of the spots I was in I got tenure on top of it so you got a, a certain percentage of an increase on bonus based on how long you've been with the company over five years so I mean I I, I, I carried all this over into here for a reason because that's all I know this is how that's all I know I don't know how to do the business any other way so you know there that's why sometimes I'll look at somebody else's video or something and I'm like wow I didn't even think about that you know I know how to do it my way you know there's a hundred different ways to do anything and, and my way works for me and I never changed up on it you know customer service the five star all that stuff started in the food industry I didn't start with eBay I didn't start online there was no such thing as that until the food industry started that five stars a restaurant rating well, look it up that's that's where all this stuff came from that's where I come from uh, let's see here yeah Aaron, Andrew I uh, I'm selling collectibles people always collect they always collect sometimes some categories may go down like the um, non sports and baseball cards went down when they flooded the market and and that all goes back to comic ball cards the first series with the Looney Tunes um, what was it Reggie Jackson and what was it Nolan Ryan I think are in those with Bugs Bunny and all of them had some holograms it was the first sets to have holograms and then the tops um, or was it upper deck came out with holograms after that too um, but that's where they dumped and killed the baseball market you know baseball cards you know people always collect though uh, I just bought the model right below that today and I'm setting it up so that helps that's helpful yeah I don't know the model below the 510 there unfortunately I, I try to pay attention to that so if somebody has questions hang on my feeds frozen again oh boy it's really frozen give me just a second I may have to reload my page uh -huh -huh. Charles I'll, I'll answer the ones up oh, now my not moves as soon as I go to answer them hang on just a second let me go back to where I was uh, hang on I gotta find where I'm at okay here we are oh, I'm setting them up now okay uh, Shopify I'm not doing much because I don't have any help right now how about greeting cards new uh, we do that for Christmas that's one of the things I buy in advance same with Christmas lights I've said that before so that's no big secret I actually design and produce and have printed our own Christmas cards every year I do them for other people too just FYI I'll do artwork I'll create them lay them out I'll pick the font the paper the stock the whole works 
for them. Um, some of the time they ask for a sample, which you can get from the site that I use. Um, but I do all that too. I usually just create my own. I make a lot of money from our own. I can sell brand new greeting cards of my own design on Walmart and Amazon as new NOS competing right along with Hallmark or any other cards that may sell online. Just FYI. I tell you, think outside the box. I print our own cards. I've, I've done my own Christmas cards since I was, when I was nine, my aunt knew a, a very dear friend that was um, like in their 80s and they were from Germany. And I was taking German at the time, and um, this was in high school. I'll take that back. It was in high school, I think my freshman year. And I did Christmas cards in German for her. And I had them produced, and she had them printed somewhere. And I've done cards since then. I did Christmas cards for her in German every year after that, every single year until she passed, my aunt. Uh, let's see where are we at. How do you plan to get people into your Shopify store? We're going to go into that um, in the videos that are coming up. But I've got all the advertisement sources I need right now, Charles, by selling on other platforms. I can't advertise that I have Shopify on the platforms, but there's nothing they can do about me putting a card advertising my Shopify with certain things they can get that won't be anywhere else. That's my ploy to get people in. I already have a base of clientele that deal with me right now. I don't care if I sell them on, a, on eBay, Amazon, or, or my Shopify. I'd rather have them on my own site because my fees are lower. So that'll bring them in. You know, you have an unlimited supply of stuff and everything goes up on Shopify, but I can select what goes on different platforms and just keep it on Shopify. That's the plus. The plus is to use Shopify and still have everything cross list as well too. But sending cards out again i've got printers we've been using for years so printing is is nothing these days you can print on demand i mean cards to slip in there for almost nothing you know thousands of them so you know and we sell a lot of stuff so i've got a lot of opportunities to advertise and since most of my items are paper or records or smalls or stuff like that the cards are going to go on top in the sealed plastic so they will have to open it up and look at the card no matter what to see their item so it's just where the placement is. I notice a lot of people, even like when I buy bags and stuff, they might put a card in there, but they just shove it in there and it's not in a noticeable spot. You got you got, to you gotta market where that card goes. You got to market where your advertising goes for even Shopify. There's others in here who do Shopify and I'm not going to call out anybody's name, but there's, there's people I've talked to who do four, who've done it for four and five years and it's 30 or 40% of their overall business. So... You play it by ear on what it is. I, I just know where we want to go with all of this, and that's that's what we're working towards. I don't care. I have no loyalty to a site. I have a loyalty to my own business. So eBay doesn't take pr priority over anything else. My own stuff takes priority number one. Our own company, our own business, our own site. You know, you you got to look at it that way, you know. Let's pop down here. Um, Gavork, how are you doing? Yes, collectors are investing in letters, postcards, stamps, and documents. Hub says sales up. Yeah, I told you, Duncan's another one. He does he does postcards, I'm sure. I don't know if you're on on um, on any of the other platforms, but postcards are up right now, like all over the place. Paper in general is up right now. It's small. It's easy to, to store. They don't have to do anything. People aren't going to shows. There's no more shows right now. So all the postcard shows, paper shows, everyone in the country is probably canceled. So all these people, these old timers are retired that would go to these that just go from for fun. They don't even, a lot of these people don't even care if they make money at them. They go and hang and talk and look at postcards. They're buying them online now. You know, I've sold a lot to California still. Uh, let's see here. I use the send offers that Don talked about week. Uh, a week ago and so back and that has helped sales uh they i'm telling you keep that open 24 7 always look at every time you get by your computer look at offers to watchers i constantly have new ones constantly if you send them out you keep getting more and in five minutes after i sent some out i've had five and six more five minutes later so keep it open constantly always have that tab open open up a second tab listings on one tab other stuff on the other and make sure you have that up there too so you can have a bunch of tabs opened you know, across the board, you know, Chrome tabs. I've always got, sometimes I've got a dozen or more opened. Pay attention to that. That's important. You know, constantly, constantly, constantly look at that. That's your chance. If somebody beats you to that person who's watching your item and that person's watching somebody else's item, if they get a bunch of offers sent to them, yours could be removed. You won't get it. So you've got to be on the ball with those. I said three times, 
do it all the time. Do it all day long. And I, I've talked to quite a few people, and that has honestly helped. Put stuff on sale. Don't do, I, I don't do promoted. I'm not going to tell you not to do promoted. That's your own call, but I won't do promoted at all. I'm not going to do it. I, I don't recommend it, but if that's what you want to do, give it a best. It might work for some people, but I have not seen anything that tells me I want to use that at all. The sales and markdown, though, promotional markdown, is fine and works fine. I know folks have been saying, hey, you should you should recommend doing the, when you buy a whole bunch of items, you get a certain discount off that. I would, I've done them. I do do those occasionally, but I would stay away from those right this moment because people may only have money and they don't want to spend too much. They may not want to buy 10 items to get a discount. They just want maybe one item. They want to do it one item at a time and cut their costs down so they're not spending as much money. They may only have a budget. Let's I'll buy one one card a week or one card a month. They're not going to want to buy if money's tight a whole bunch of stuff. So I would stick it to one item at a time kind of discount. So sales markdown twenty percent off certain items and just let it go with that. Now if you want to do a twenty or thirty percent markdown and off also offer you know secondary wise where they can get a discount if they buy or you know maybe free shipping if they buy some that could help you too but certain items I, I i would be hesitant only because i would try to keep your costs to the buyer you know at, at a certain level certain ones because most of what's selling in like just the random postcards are just you know cheaper ones i mean I, again in the last 10 days on hip i've sold more than i usually sell in a whole month on and on and on as far back as I can say, just like that. And my sales have just been constant with, with HIP and some of the other sites we're on. Again, it depends on what you're selling. So um, hopefully that helps out a little bit there. Let me hop down here. Before, oh, I just lost it. Hang on just a second. Uh, J and J, we didn't go either. Been listing HBA. We picked up on our three road trips. I was going to ask you how that all went. You said you had a whole bunch you were still working on. Hopefully that's going well for you too, J and J. Mark, coins should be selling well too. Yeah, coins are selling well. I did take a glance at that. I've got some coins that we weren't planning on listing. I may list them if if need be, but right now the 24% down, I really think that if I was able to list what we normally do, I wouldn't be down right now. In the store I share with you, we're down in other areas here and there, but you know, we've, uh, as I said, we've switched up inventory. I've pulled stuff from my store. We've changed up and we stopped listing totally certain categories. You know, pay attention to that. You may have to stop in certain categories because it's not enough of a pull and you're, you're wasting that time on stuff that you could have sold that may sell better. Right now, your best bet is to sell stuff that people who are wealthy would want or collectors that are wealthy would want or those that are retired would want because they're not worried about the paycheck. Those are the two ends of the category that I'm hitting now just by sheer logics of, of it. The retired folks mostly buy from us anyway right now. You know, They're still buying from us. They're buying more than they did before. It's obvious, very obvious. The retirees are buying more than they did 10 days ago, 15 days ago, for sure. You know, there's just no no doubt about it. I just even just on this feed here, there's what four or five people that are telling me the exact same thing in their stores. So you know, switch up if you have to. Uh, I can't. I, I don't know what to address to tell you if you don't have that sort of merchandise. You know, there's sources online. I, I can't tell you how good any of them are. I know people say they buy stuff at, off of eBay, but 99% of the people they're selling these bulk lots sell those same items and are, are selling you the stuff they couldn't sell. You know, you, you look at it how you want, you know, obviously people miss stuff, but I don't like that, that routine because I, 99% of the time, I'm always going to make more buying them directly from somebody and I can look through them. I, I don't like to buy anything sight unseen. You know, that's, that's how, that's why I don't lose money. You know, I haven't lost on a purchase in years and yeah, it's not a brag. It's just, just because I don't buy anything if I don't know. There's too much stuff out there for me to take a chance anymore on certain items. I just don't shell out the money for them. I don't mind shelling out five or $10,000 if I'm buying something and I know I'm going to make some good money on it, but I don't do that unless I know. I don't take a chance even on a, on a $10 a lot of something, you know, unless I see something in there. My $10 could go somewhere else that I see something in and I'll buy that over it. I know obviously, again, it's not possible in some areas, but there are still live auctions. A lot of the auction houses are now going online and are still doing business. There's one locally here that is online right this very minute. So they do an auction once a week. It's collectibles and it's still open. You know, so check that out. You still have opportunities. My pickers still have stuff for me to get. I haven't gotten. 
Can't go out for 10 more days because I'm quarantined, as I said. Um, do you have a video regarding the problem with differences between FedEx shipping estimates and eBay versus what FedEx actually bills, which has been double on items lately? I have not seen any issues with FedEx doubling on ours. I've only sent a few items via FedEx. I actually use UPS more than, than FedEx any day of the week um, just because they're local and some of the stuff can be done with the local post office. They have some deal with the post office for end, end uh, delivery and stuff like that. So I, I just do UPS. I, I have a FedEx account. UPS was the first one to personally call our, our, our place of business when I signed up and set up the account and I gave them, you know, basic information. So I went with them to start with and they gave me a better deal. So just FYI, you can work out on deals and some depending on your volume. Um, but I don't use um, FedEx for almost anything. I have sent some FedEx for ground when they were cheaper with matchbooks with matches in them just because it's ground. Um, and it depends on where, what site it's being sold at. For the most part, UPS is what I do. I have not seen that, nor would I know how to show it having not seen it, um, JC. I do apologize. I, I just don't know anything about that. I don't want to talk about something I'm, I'm totally unaware of. I have heard that before, though, so don't. I'm not saying it's not happened. I just I haven't any way to verify it. Yeah, high-end coins um, are up still. They could go up even higher instead of going down like other categories. Again, because investors buy these. I don't... Maybe 20% of investment companies offer stand, or offer coins and stuff. Maybe even more than that. I know it used to be in the 20 range. Some ha offer comic book purchases as part of a retirement plan. Like IRA, basically, kind of thing. Good, bad, or different. I, I don't know how to take that as a person who enjoys comics for comics and not necessarily for the value. Mind you... I do like selling them, but I, I totally and 100% appreciate what they are first and foremost. I love the artwork. Nothing like the look, feel, and size of a Golden Age comic book, like a Wiz 127 or something. It's just, it, it, it's exciting to me. It's neat. Um, all Flash comic or something from the 40s or, you know, an All Star from the 40s or something. You know, Superman and the first few issues. You know, those are exciting to see and hold just for the sheer historical aspect of it i guess uh, let's see shelly how are you doing galveston texas i have been there as well and thank you very kindly my son is upstairs laying on the sofa right this minute now we were supposed to keep him separate from everybody else but at this point you know he's probably had it for days or a week or two before he actually can show the symptoms it might be the regular flu we don't know that's the only thing i worry about is that we don't know if he's had it or not um you know, so he could still get it, even if we think he's safe or I'm safe, you know. Um, I don't know, you know. He has a fever. He has all the symptoms, but you, you don't know. They're not testing because they don't have any. And the only way they test them right now is if you're admitted to the hospital due to serious conditions. We were told to stay away from hospitals or doctor's offices unless we have to um, because it's not the safest place to be because people are coughing and hacking in them. For those in, in New Orleans, you know, uh, the, the fear is growing there right now. So it could be as hot as New York any day. You know, if you're not aware, as of today, the U.S. has the most example or the most cases of people with it right now. You know, so that doesn't sound too good. And the death toll has been rising. We broke a thousand in this country, too. So, you know, it, it's going to get way worse before it gets better. Not wishing, not thinking anything. I pray for everybody's well-being. Um, but... It's just the facts. We haven't, we're not anywhere near a peak the way it looks. They were saying, well, at this point, it would be more like 30 some odd days away. It might not even be that close. You know, again, I'm crossing my fingers and praying that that's not the case. But, you know, we, we've got to look out for yourself. That's why, like Aaron talking about cutting your costs, cut your expenses at all costs. You, nobody needs to worry about certain things right now. If you've got services you use, cancel them. You know, cut your own dog's nails, trim your dog, whatever you do, just don't don't worry about any of that stuff now. It would be pointless to spend any extra money that you don't have to have, you know. It, it's just pointless um, anyway. I, I'm going to have another video too tomorrow. It's just going to be a short one, but um, I found something out which is troubling. On I went to order a pair of shoes, as I was saying. You'll see tomorrow. It's a pair of Rockports too. There's a scam of some sort going on really major from major... I bought them at Shoe Carnival, this one pair. I bought the second one offline, but um, 
I know it's a little off topic, but there's some major scamming going around with something, and I'm going to call out to you with proof and a little thing tomorrow. Um, it's it's semi-related to reselling because it could affect you if these turn out that they're fakes. Um, I'm going to show you something tomorrow on that. It's just going to be a separate video on its own, about six or seven minutes. It's already shot, um, but it might open your eyes on some other issues that... Um, are going on and it could have something to do with the tariffs that were put on China um, and showing what a bad actor they are in this aspect. Again, I'm, I don't care who you are, what you are. I'm not trying to criticize because it's not it's, it's corporations even in China that are doing this stuff, not the average person make, trying to make a living at some place. It goes for any country, here, there, or anywhere. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. At least I can still order Pizza Hut getting Hawaiian soon. I don't li I never liked pineapple on a pizza. I can deal with anchovies though, believe it or not. Uh, where are we at now? Mark, I have the no store option on eBay. They haven't given me any free listings. Should I request that from them in the, this case? You can ask. I don't know if they would give you any free listings. Is my only um, consideration on that. I, I don't know. I I just think that they should offer if you've been on ebay enough to be out of their probationary period just give people four or five hundred listings or something you know at least give them a hundred give them something to get something up without having to worry about the financial aspect of it that's just my take on it that would get them stuff that maybe n normally wouldn't have been listed on the platform to begin with you know that's how i take it you know i i'm for the the model of charging a flat fee and then as many listings as you want like amazon does I've got a business account on Amazon. I pay forty bucks, thirty nine ninety nine a month, or thirty nine ninety five, and I can list tens of thousands of items for that one cost, and not have to worry about a single solitary thing. There's no overcharges. There's no extra fees. There's no nothing else when I'm doing that. You know, it, it's it's a no brainer to to do it. That's I just can't believe they haven't done that as well. They want to they want to be structured like Amazon, but not charge like Amazon and hope to get the difference in in the fees. They're making a profit now. Their only way eBay's, you know, making these big profits is from the fees. One other thing I call out, which I'm sure I'll get a little hate on this one here too. When they did the, they gave away the tax break they did to corporations a year or two ago, all the companies did buybacks of their stock. Those same companies right now, since instead of keeping that money on hand in case something happened, those companies have nothing on hand and are now asking and getting a bailout for this. If they wouldn't have bought back the stocks, which only help their own personal pocketbooks, they would not be in the condition or the state they are in now. They would have had extra money sitting there. So if something happened, they would have been fine. You know, that's the biggest complaint I have about this. I'm not saying tax breaks or anything like that's bad or you shouldn't help out certain things but you know though these companies wouldn't be screwing over their workers had they not bought back the stocks which only inflate the value of the stocks and raise their profit margins you know that's that's just something that bugs me every time i think about that but enough on that let's see where we're at I bet China's eBay sales are down. Yeah, anything, any of the Chinese sellers on eBay are down, even on Amazon from what I see too, um, because a lot of people aren't wanting to take a risk of buying from China to begin with. Uh, but this has been going on because the tariffs. Let, let's talk about that just for a second here. What happened with the tariffs is the Chinese goods haven't been selling as much but the Vietnamese goods have. So we've swapped out Chinese goods for Vietnamese goods at this point. That's what's happened. And a lot of what's going on, and this relates to the shoes, the rock ports a little bit, is China is manipulating, sending items with false labels and then sending them out from there, pretending it's from another country. So, you know, you look that up. That's that's literally what's going on. There's articles all over the place. I, I dig into this stuff. I enjoy finding out this kind of stuff. So, I mean, maybe I'm that's out of there for some people, but I like that stuff challenge except i'm getting my 50k out of them that's what i would love to be able to do tr too honestly jc how you doing cornelius good evening uh let me pop down here uh where are we hey chris how are you doing haven't seen or heard from you in a while hope you and yours are well in california as well we did the road trip just before everything happened. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that, J&J. Flippin' Ozarks has 50K as well, too. Good, good, good. 
Don, I think you can list 50k items a month just cut out sleeping. Thank you, Duncan. That would I don't sleep much, much, much these days either. I'm too wired up these days. I feel trapped almost to some extent. Although that is a good idea if I could figure out how to do that. I think there was a, a American Dad episode where he took some pill and he could stay up all night and work without affecting him. Hey, Amazon Seller 99, how are you doing today? Yeah, I've got sinuses and stuff or something. I thought it was probably what my son has, but again, everything affects everybody differently. So I've been constantly taking uh, Claritin, constant. Uh, if I don't, I probably, you wouldn't, I'd sound weird because my nose is totally plugged up. First thing I do in the morning is have to blow my nose like massively. Uh, Michelle, how are you doing? Michelle has a question if I don't lose where I'm at. Am I remembering correctly that you did a video about turning off the auto relist? Yes. Um, it's in, geez, I wished I had it open now. Um, it's on, uh, oh shoot. I want to say it's on the listing page on the left side. There's an option on the bottom left, um, settings. I, I, I wish I could remember. I, I, if I went there, I could find it right off the bat. It's just a little radio button. You click and it removes that option. Um, I can't remember without seeing the screen. I'm sorry. If I can remember, maybe I'll throw that in another video uh, here. Don't defer your fees a month as you have to pay them later on. I pay mine daily. I don't pay mine daily, but we just pay them You know, whenever they're due. They are automatically taken out. I don't have to do anything. It, it's um, automatic payment out of our PayPal account. Done it that way for years. Never had an issue. I do check and verify, though. You know, at the end of every month when the bill comes out, I do verify and I do look over my invoices and my invoices are like 90 pages. So I do look over there. There's some keys to looking them over really quickly and stuff to just look at certain spots and stuff. Just FYI, you don't have to look over every single one. There's certain ones that I always look at, those certain areas. I always, always look at it, all my invoices. Um, Michelle, maybe it was in preferences, site preferences. I want to say that's not it, though. I'll try and throw that together on a, on a video or something. Maybe I'll add a section to the, the video for tomorrow. Uh, let's see here. After all this time, I took this channel to convince me to sign up on Patreon and subscribe new Patreon subscriber incoming. Well, thank you, JC. I try to put out enough content on there. Um, I go into a lot of detail on Patreon and talk about stuff I don't talk about on here. Perso uh, personnel idea ADA online. I'm not sure. I'm sure I pronounced that terribly. Hello from Portugal. Hope you guys are doing as well too. <coughs> Excuse me. I do have allergies and, and asthma, so my my nose and sinuses sometimes are terrible. Speaking of Dom, I talked about you a little while ago, Dom. We were talking about comic books. Yeah, China's always hot, though, Duncan. Always. I, I never, ever, ever have a problem messing with Chinese stuff. That always sells. Vintage China, everything. I love stamps. I have to say, Duncan, though, the dragons, I've kept all my dragons. I've kept every single one of them. I kept the... I bought um, the peace doves. So I bought a whole bunch of the peace doves, Duncan. You know, I'm sure you know which ones I'm talking about and who the very well-known artist is. Um, I've been keeping all those, you know, and I just picked up a set of the i think they're the registered air um shoot it's the shanghai set i think you probably know what i'm talking about I, I, those are in my personal collection right now rupert and lilibet how are you doing welcome from the uk well thank you very kindly uh, let's see here Uh, scan thin paper with no problems. Bob scans thin paper with the DS510. I've had people tell me otherwise, though. Uh, Linda Woods. I bought some old doll or some doll magazines from 70s, 80s, and 90s. I'm confused about how to ship the items. Why don't they count as media? You can't ship magazines at all 
um, as media because it has advertisements in them. That is against the law to do such. So just FYI, they have to go. Um, depends on the magazines. Most magazines can go out first class. Most magazines, depending on the size, are around 10 ounces the way we ship them. So they do all go first class. Comic books are around 6 to 7 ounces, depending on whether it's a... 100 page uh, like annual or something versus a regular one um, and we ship those out first class that way too now if it doesn't have advertisements at all it's like a journal you can legally ship magazines you can even ship comic books that don't have uh, advertisements in it legally the advertisements is the thing it's not what's in it that what type of comic or what type of book it is um, you can ship anything as long as it doesn't have any advertisements well it can have some incidentals for other periodic or movies or not movies other books and things but for the most part most of that all has to go first class or a parcel if it's heavy like some of the the thick holiday magazines and stuff have to go out you know they're a parcel or a priority because they're like one point or one pound and like four or five ounces the way we ship them uh yeah and, and he and uh, bob got that one on there too uh, let's see here Hey, Disney Family 515, how are you doing? Oh, hang on, I just lost it. Oh, hang on. Uh, Caroline Picks, I'm using the uh, Epson 500W lately. If I set the die over three you mean dpi over 300 the photos will not upload to ebay mine are 600 you shouldn't have any problem at 300 dpi i've been uploading them that way you can every photo can be two gigs from what i see i do 600 dpi always 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 are you is that the flatbed you're talking about Flatbeds will have, and depending on the size of the item, but I, everything's 600 dpi. All my 8x10s are 600 dpi. And those are full full uh, scans. Those are done through the duplex scanner, though. Oh, let's see here. It's Pat the Reseller. How are you doing? When you buy postcards, if there is a price written on the back in pencil, do you erase it before listing it? No, I don't even care about that. Goo goo, good jube. Doesn't matter. You'll see them. You'll see prices. Sometimes two and three prices. Sometimes the prices are fifty years old. So I never even worry about that. Yeah, they don't. I, on high dollar cards, I do though. If it's like a Tahoe card or something, I'm gonna erase it. I'm gonna make that card look as good as it can. If there's pencil on the front, I usually erase that, too. There are ways to clean up some postcards, just FYI. I've probably discussed some of those in Patreon. But there are ways to clean up paper and stuff like that, too. There are things that I do do. I, I don't worry about a $10 card with the price on the back, though. Only the high-dollar stuff do I clean and preserve and, and improve the value of. Let's see here. Yeah, a whole bunch of other folks are saying the same thing. Mark, same thing. Michelle, JC, leave leave it on. Naked and laughing. Yeah, I kind of figured they were cutting back on that too because they've been but they've been tagging my videos like that, demonetizing live shows and stuff for months. Just over a stupid word or something. Uh, a slab is when you have them send it off and have them graded. Yeah, comics are selling. I sold a whole bunch. I just did. I mean, a, a bunch of comics, even like Jetsons and stuff like that. Again, because the collectors, a lot of folks are older collectors or they're retired. They don't need the money. They're not worried about work because they're retired. <laughs> did I see oil? Yeah, I figured oil's going to go way down. Oil will be down farther than this. The homes market is going to be way down after this in five or six months. And I, I, I don't like to dwell off other people, but if you're looking for a house and you've got the cash in five or six months or next year at this point when the market's down and dead, you can pick up some houses for almost nothing would be my gather. You know, again, I don't wish any ill harm on anybody because we've been in those spots, but that's what's going to happen. 
There's just no way around it unless the government steps in. You know, I know they've done some things here and some things there, but it's no way going to be enough. The if you saw the unemployment report from last week, 3.1 million, they showed all the way back, I think, to um, uh, the stock market crash in the 30s. And all of those are a blip for unemployment. This is the highest one by like 50 times that's ever been shown for unemployment in one week time frame. And this is nothing. We're just now working our way. This is just from the states that have went on lockdown and laid off people. You know, and some of these people may get paid for a week or two and haven't even had a chance to file yet. Or they've been locked down and haven't been able to do it online and the numbers aren't showing up. It's going to be bad. You know, I don't wish, again, anything about anybody on this, but it's going to be bad. There's just no way around it. You know, the 2008 crash, we made it through fine, but I didn't I didn't own stock. I had, you know, what, what was I going to lose? You know, nowadays, you know, we're... we're we, we realized, you know, our mistakes back then, and I'm not, you know, going into that. We have backups on almost everything, you know, money-wise or the ability to turn something over or something. I kept stuff, even going back to gold and silver and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, we talked about comics. I'm sure I'm just now catching up to the conversation from earlier. Yeah, menus almost always sell. I mean, we've sold menus into the five, six, seven hundred dollar range for some Chinese ones. Back to Duncan again. Yeah, I do love comic books. Hey, Craig Landshark Pickers here too. How are you doing? <coughs> Excuse me. Now this is my whatever my allergies, my cold or flu or whatever it is bugging me now. Oh, where am I at? Yeah, I wished I ran mile high. I'd love to have all those comic books, but no. Uh, are you a collector? How are you doing? Yeah, it's not. This is just how I run my stuff. There's no sense in panicking or freaking out. It's not going to save anything. It's just going <clears> to <throat> risk your health and well being. You're going to constantly be worried and panicky. It's, it's just not going to help you. You know? I mean, I, I can't solve everybody's problems. There's going to be some people that uh, they're going to have some, some really bad times. I've been there. I've been to that spot. So I, I would never wish that upon anybody, but it's going to happen. There's just, there's no way around it. The, you know, just, just your medical bills. If you're laid off, you don't have insurance and it takes a little bit of time for anything to kick in to qualify and everything else. You know, anybody who gets this too, they, they could have a lifelong issue with it because uh, I've, I saw what SARS and some of the other issues have done to people, leaving holes. I'm not going to go there. Let's just let's just not talk about that. <clears throat> let's move on to better things. Uh, let's let's pop down here a little bit. Hang on. Yeah, I wished. I do have a lot of stamps, enough to warrant a large bank deposit box. Um, hang on just a second here. I'm trying to get up without my feed disappearing, and it did it anyway. Hang on. Dr. Full Nut, what that is, where are we at? Oh, I'm sorry, I see now. I slowed down a little bit, but she's still going to Dasha. Hang on, let go down. Hello, Kelly, how are you doing? Yeah, Mythbusters, I knew as soon as somebody said something. Hey, Fancy Pink, how are you doing? Hang and chat. I, I used to live towards Kissimmee. I used to go out there. There's a flea market out there in Florida, actually. St. Cloud Flea Market. We used to do a lot of stuff there. Uh, hang on. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Uh, let me see here where we at. Uh, Dr. Phil, I've noticed I've been getting less people watching. 
less offers to send, but more overall sales for now. Yeah, as I said, if, if I can get some more items up, I think my sales will still be right along in line with where I've been going. Um, again, I don't worry right off the bat. If Even if sales are down one month, the next month, who knows? It's the end of the year total that I worry about. I don't really worry about one month bad, one month good. At the end of the year, I keep ending up good, so... Thanks, Craig, on the background. That's just one random one. I found I've got three sites I use now that somebody turned me on to that offer public domain images. Very careful on <clears throat> picking stuff that's not uh, that, or that's in the public domain. Don't need any issues. If you haven't left the, if you haven't hit the like button, if you guys want to hit the like button, I got around 200 people on now, and we're at 84 likes. It'd be great if we could at least get it up to 100. I know I'm terrible on saying stuff like that, but uh, let me see where we at. I was getting frustrated with my laptop running so slow at times. You can uh, clear up your, you can um, um, scan um, your disk drive too. You can correct errors. You can um, defragment. You can clear up your temp files. Um, you can clear up all the extra files on your, your laptop. Something else you should do if you have a laptop is go into Device Manager and go through every item and check to make sure there isn't an update that you missed. Your laptop, is if, just like ours, only updates the key things like the Windows and, or, or whatever your, your um, operating system is. Most of the other stuff, if it's not set up or you don't do it, you have to go in and manually do it. Most of the time when I hear people slow on a laptop, if they go through Device Manager, hit Settings, hit your Settings button. When the Settings comes up, you have where your apps and all that stuff are if you're on Windows 10. In the search box on the left, type in Device Manager. That I always, I know there's other ways to do it. Device Manager is just really easy. It's just a row and you can go right on down it. By each one, click on each one of the little... Uh, devices or items in the device manager list and you'll have an option to update drivers do them all and do update driver by automatically check for them and you'll be surprised every time every single time somebody has said something about a laptop they found sometimes six seven eight nine ten twenty things in their device manager that haven't been updated in years and that's usually when a laptop slows down what i find of course, I got an IT degree. Craig's probably thinking some, something similar. That's one thing I always see is stuff isn't updated. And a lot of that will tie into speed on the system, too, as well as deleting all that extra junk and cleaning up files, get rid of apps that you don't use. I don't have any games, anything on any of my business computers, nothing extra. It's base bones, only what I need, no solitary, no extra things, no anything that doesn't that I don't need to use for that. Now if I've got one that I'm writing scripting for like a app or something that I'm doing it for my own app, I do it on a specific laptop that's got extra stuff on it or my graphics laptop which has, you know, graphics card and all that kind of stuff, but almost everybody who tells me that, if you go through the device manager list in your settings, you're going to see something in there that you probably have never even thought of. The other thing is I update our BIOS or check to make sure there's a BIOS update. That is something that most people with decent knowledge of at least how the basics are in a computer can do on their own. Once you update the BIOS, you're probably going to go back in and find a whole bunch of more stuff that can then be updated. I check the BIOS, you know, at least once a year on most, most of our laptops. I've updated my server BIOS, I think all of the laptop BIOS at least once. All of that stuff sped up sped everything that I got. You know, the only other thing is maybe your your um, card is damaged possibly if you have to plug in and you're not using Wi-Fi. Just FYI, I don't use Wi-Fi in the house for any of our business. Everything is wired in and I've got a wire here right now. I've got a bank of wires. We've got, you know, a substation and the whole works inside for all that, so. Uh, no UV at FedEx. One good point. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Should UV the whole country? UV is not great for you. Anybody who has a reptile and has some of the UV lights, some UV rays are harmful. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, we've got I've got a can of Lysol right here. That same thing. I keep we've got we bought a whole bunch of them before it got bad. My I'm I'm not a germ foe, but with our son I always want to be careful. 
Hey, Carl, if I didn't call you out already. Um, Michelle, I sold during the recession really well. Yeah, we didn't have any problems in the recession in all honesty. I, it was mostly brick and mortars from what I personally see. Online atmosphere back then during the recession were totally different people. And I didn't see much difference or loss in it really at all. Uh, let's see here. Talking about donating masks, Facebook donated 775,000 face masks, masks that were extra. They had that many extra. Who knows what they still have? And they didn't donate them until just a couple days ago. And then who was it? I think Amazon donated 1,000 respirators or something like that. Maybe it was 4,000. Why they would have had them, I have no clue. And why they're just now donating them, I have no clue either, but... Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Yeah, the only thing with people just coming online to sell now, they're going to have that time frame. They're not going to get the money. They're going to have to wait maybe even up to 30 days to get some of the, the funds in because I, if I'm not mistaken, there's still a hold on all that stuff. And then you're going to be limited by how many items you can sell. And they're not going to just instantly sell a bunch of stuff. They're going to be going to people they can trust now because nobody wants to have to argue over money that you might need right now and wait 10, 20 days to get the money back. You know, because eBay's not going to instantly give you your money back instantly. So the, the feedback is so important right now in my book. I wouldn't take a chance on somebody without good feedback because, again, like it's not on Amazon we're talking. Amazon's a little different, but on eBay it's totally different. Your money may be tied up for 10, 14 days if you buy something from somebody who's not reputable and they keep the money and don't send you the item, so. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's going to get too much in there. Yeah, Dom's here. If you uh, stockpiling masks, expect a knock on your door from the FBI. I would not doubt that because they are doing that. There's reports all over of people getting arrested right now. As I said, there's a case in court right this minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Border Force in Oz, which is Australia, for those who don't know, arrested some people trying to ship masks over to China in bulk. Wow. Susan, uh, cook cookbooks do sell. I didn't look at what they're doing right now. The only thing I would say on that is it, it could be. It depends. I would say you'd sell more newer cookbooks than the vintage ones right now. People do collect cookbooks, but I think you might be selling cookbooks for things that are newer just to cook with. People collect cookbooks, though, so those are two different areas in cookbooks in general. You know, but the only thing you got to think about that is they may not have the ability to buy the items in the recipe because of the situations at the store. So, again, that's going to be a real iffy thing here. Last time I was in a store, and that was five or six days ago, um, there wasn't much there for meat or anything else. I, I don't know what I could have cooked with what was there. I mean, I would have survived with the food, but, you know, I wouldn't have been doing any fancy fine cooking. I worked in restaurants, so I can cook pretty much anything, but... I don't know what I would. I would have really had to thought outside the box to cook something. Uh, retro. I won't say your first name. Pardon me. Mentioned a lot of times you sell on multiple platforms. Do you have a bottom end price point for hit postcards or discogs? Hit postcards are the same price they are on eBay. It's imported directly with nothing to do. Discogs are lower price discs that I put in discogs. But hit, hit postcards, you can't. Well, I guess you could. If you only list it on HIP, you can just list on HIP. But mine are automatically imported. Every card I have on one site is imported to HIP, so that's how HIP works. Yeah, as your lower price to some extent on both of those would be fairly correct. But I don't adjust the prices on on HIP and Discogs. I pretty much only list, you know, like under say fifty dollar records in the first place. You know, most of my good 78s sell better on Amazon, so that's where most of those go. Most of them sell, I should say. I do list those on other sites as well, depending on fees. Now, let me just say this, too. Somebody else said earlier that um, it's a good time to cross-list your stuff. It may be a good time to cross-list your stuff, but I, I want to warn everybody who's thinking about rushing out and doing that now. 
if you go to Etsy or something, you're paying automatically for four months, 20 cents for every listing you, you cross list up there immediately. So you better think about the fees it's going to cost you to list on another site. Now, Amazon's the safest one because it's only 40 bucks, 39.95 for a business account on Amazon. And then you can list as many things as you want. So if you're doing it that route, Amazon is the safest bet because you've got a one-time fee a month. And if you sell something, then you pay a little more. Other than that, if you're going to Etsy, Poshmark, any of that stuff, you're going to start paying for fees when you're doing this. And like um, if you're not like uh, if you're Shopify or something, you're going to end up having to pay to pay for one of their um, downloads to have your stuff imported. And it's some of it's it's expensive to have. 30, 40, 50,000 eBay listings imported for us. It was outrageous, but it sure as heck saved me money and time with how long it would have taken to get those in any other way. But, you know, if you don't have the money to do that, it's going to be a long, drawn-out process, and you're paying for each, most all platforms to list each item. So think of the cost. Don't raise your costs unless you're sure you're going to get a uh, recoup a, a profit over and above that cost out of that. I mean, that's the only way I can take it. I'm not going to spend a dime on anything else unless I have to. I mean, I'm that way anyway every day of the week. It doesn't matter to me whether it's a crisis like this or not. I don't spend anything unless I have to. I'm not going to, I don't buy new cars. I don't buy fancy stuff. I don't buy fancy jewelry. I mean, the wife's got some and stuff like that, but it's got, we've got it off from reselling, you know. Uh, let me slide down here. We're going to end it off in just a few minutes as it's ran fairly long today. Well, you're in Florida, Carl, so yeah, you probably haven't had a heater. Yeah, Fancy Pink sold all of her cookbooks. Don't sign up to new subscriptions at the moment. Save your money. That is probably a good thing, I would say, as well. It depends on how much you're selling, though, because if you are paying the higher fees to list and you're listing a whole bunch of stuff, it may be better off just to get a subscription to start with, just to save that extra money. It depends on how much you're listing. And if you have a store, you may get you know, the, the uh, free listings. I don't know. I, I don't want to quote you know, on eBay because they didn't, they didn't give it a, a clear acknowledgement on it. I know I'm going to get them this month and next month for sure. I would imagine they're probably going to extend that because their sales may be slow in some areas. They may sell more items during this time frame, but I, my guess is they're going to be less expensive items in general other than the investor purchasers, if that makes sense. Going back to like high dollar coin stamps, sports cards, and things like that. Yeah, cheaper is not always better. Biscayne Kid. Have you seen the trend for Christmas? Though? I'm selling Christmas well right now, mostly yard art, lights, etc. There's a movement right now to decorate outside for Christmas. Yeah, I saw people putting up lights and stuff and trying to make a happier, more festival or festive environment. Yeah, I saw Christmas lights all year round, so, you know, I'm still selling them. I saw Christmas all year round, too, though. I don't care what season it is. I always saw Christmas, Valentine's. Um, patriotic, uh, Easter, I don't always sell uh, Thanksgiving, but Halloween, all those are always listed. Any day of the week I list them. I don't care what season it is. Those collectibles, that is. Uh, let's see here. I've been to Boston. Floppy Bob. Somebody's asking a question. Where is the answer? Duncan rubs off the pencil press. I do on the expensive ones, as I said. Hey, Rebecca, how are you doing? Well, thank you very kindly, Rebecca. Hey, Deb, how are you doing? I think my feed has just moved, and I'm totally somewhere I wasn't. Somebody had a Vero, and I didn't see where it was from. Thank you, Floppy, <coughs> Floppy Bob. Yeah, banks will bounce back. The government's giving them whatever they want. It's not going to help the rest of us, but... Yeah, Michelle's saying the same thing. In 2008, I didn't have a bunch of stocks or anything. <clears throat> I didn't lose in my investments. I didn't lose money in the bank or anything like that. Sales were still coming in. I didn't, you know, I didn't, didn't see anything at all going wrong. <clears throat> Now, I'm not going to talk political, but I, I would say that 
my sales and my business has not changed under this administration or the last administration. Either way, I don't see any difference because the people like us aren't on the top tier who live off of the stock markets and stuff. You know, make believe money in my book. I don't I don't worry about all that aspect because it doesn't affect me personally. Um, you know, I worry about other people, so don't get me wrong, but it doesn't affect my business. I'm talking business. We're talking business. I keep personal and my feelings and help side one place. My business is my business. I don't cross those lines. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't think it's going to be a huge endeavor. Somebody made a comment on one of the videos that um, you're not going to be thinking like this in, in two months from now. I'm going to be thinking the same way because this is my business. This is what I do. I'll figure a way. I'll figure out some other items. If one thing isn't selling... I've already got other items for going on, and I've discussed those earlier in the Patreon video. So there's stuff that you can be leveraging right now to carry you through this. You know, I'm telling you, there's 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 stuff that's always going to sell. There's certain things that you can always sell, whether they're necessities or not. There's stuff that you can always sell. There's always stuff to sell. Always, 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 always. It doesn't matter what's going on for the most part because people still have to buy certain things. It may may mean I resort to wholesale in some areas and not. You know, it just depends. But there's stuff that you can look into right this second that can carry you through from what I've seen and what I see happening right now, too. I check this kind of stuff because I don't want to... This is how I pay my bills and how I support my wife and kids. So I'm, you know, finding other ways. Right now, we're looking into some other options and things. Now, I've been working on stuff before this hit this hard. If you've watched some of my videos, I've told you we've got a lot of big things going on behind the scenes. We're covering our bases. That's what I always do. Cover your bases. Be safe. Have backups for everything. Don't don't rely on anybody else because there's no guarantee anybody is going to save you if something happens. I always look at it as if I'm on my own, you know, with the family, of course, but we're on our own. And what would I do if I didn't have any way of any backup? I've got to have my own form of backup for everything. This is your, your income. I have insurance. Uh, I've said this before, too, so... I could claim insurance, you know, and, and get the revenue that I'm lost through my insurance. So I'm not too worried. That's why I I have a BOP. You know, again, I'm not trying to rub that in. I'm sure I'll get some, some nasty comment on the BOP aspect of it. But I've had a business owner's policy for a very long time. I haven't had to use it once, so I won't feel guilty at all with, you know, filing a claim for lost wages. Depends on what you have, though. Most people in the reselling industry don't have a BOP. They think it's unnecessary. The BOP does a lot more. If my building's burned down or my inventory is lost or I'm robbed, all that stuff is replaced. I don't have to shell it anything. I don't have a deductible. It's a business policy. If you only have income coming in from your business, you sure as heck better have some form of backup. BOP is 100% legit. I have it through a main company. It covers all kinds of stuff. So a disruption in the market is what's going on right now. So I've, I'm covered. I'm not going to end up you know, screwed either way it goes, even if my sales do go down to a certain point. I'm not going to file unless it's to a desperate situation because I don't really need it right now. I'm still making money and putting money in the bank even right now. It's just not as much as I was. And it's only 20 some odd percent. So... And as quite a few people in the feed are saying, their sales are up in, in vintage and collectibles and things. Again, they're retired people who buy most of what I sell anyway. They're they don't whether they're there's something going on or not. They're they they don't have to work either way. They're not waiting on a paycheck. Their pensions and their money or their their bank accounts still there. Uh, the the virus or this any of these issues doesn't affect that. You know, there's a reason why I switched to collectibles from all the stuff I used to sell. There's a reason I don't mess with clothing. It's hassle. There's a reason I don't mess with a lot of the stuff that I used to mess with. I've sold everything everybody else has sold. We've done book scanning. I've done the clothing, NOS, FBA, RA. You name it, I've done it. You know, I've went through the gamut. Some of it we still do here and there. But, you know, you you, you got to cover yourself. You cover yourself. This is your only form of income. What are you going to do if something happens? What, what if you hurt your foot or you have an on-the-job injury, you know? you got to worry about that, you know? I pay workman's comp for my employees. You know, no employee is going to lose a job with me. They're going to have their job as soon as they're able to come back over. And my son's safe and we're out of quarantine, you know? Uh, let's see here. Let me slide down. We'll just take a couple more because it's getting... Yeah, we're running on the two-hour. I don't like to run the two-hour because YouTube always punishes me. Hang on, I got a whole bunch more I haven't got to, but we're going to... Uh, my feet just bounced. Hang on just a second. Let me try to figure out where we were at, and I can... Uh, 
Boy, I'm way off. I hate I hate YouTube's feed sometime. Uh, hang on, I think I'm almost there. Yeah, as Christmas lights around the neighborhood, I think I'm about the same spot. I saw mostly vintage Halloween like postcards and um, Denison graphics and things like that. Baseball cards themselves may be dead, but graded, slabbed, high-end, scarce baseball cards are selling like mad. Still, check the prices. Regular baseball cards, you know, hundred dollar, couple hundred dollar baseball cards aren't selling at all. But thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar baseball cards are selling as much as they were before. From all of the ones I've looked at, all of my high dollar sports collectibles have sold pretty much, or have had offers, and I will be listing just the rest of them to somebody specific. Hey, Annie, how are you doing? Glad to have you back. It's been a while. Listing some Odyssey 2 games today. Very cool stuff. Yeah, we've got a, a, a 2600 back here. Um, probably going to end up hooking it up just to play. We'll put it on the 10-foot screen. Hey, Midwest Picker, how are you doing? Uh, again, I'm not trying to ignore anybody by not calling out names. I'm just trying to get to some questions. Uh, yeah, no estate sales. List time, list time for sure. Uh, thank you, Bergen. Bergen Treasures. For scanning, I have an Epson uh, DS410. Works very nice and no issues. Clear scans, I scan at 1200 DPI. Yeah, I only scan the real high-end ones like the 1200 if I'm doing very specific artwork or I'm going to crop out for a PNG or something like that. Other than that, I don't usually do anything over 600. I find that 600 has has very little issues and it blows when at 600 like on a card, it fills the entire screen when you hover over for the enlargement on it. it that's all I really needed on them. And if you look at it, there's if you it would take a very good eye to even be able to tell the difference between 600 and 1200. Unless you're zooming in to do some graphics. I, I do a lot of graphics. So for me, I want the better one. Don Mark greeting cards. No, I've done greeting cards for a very long time, Duncan. With Shopify, how do you take care of sales tax from all the different states? Um, there's... Shopify has that all set up too, but for for like um, stuff that sells on eBay and stuff like that, even if it's on Shopify, if it sells on eBay, it's already taken care of on eBay. If it sells on Amazon, it's taken care of on Amazon. So I don't have to worry about that. This is going to be the first year I'm going to have to see what goes on because I've been reporting that locally here every six months to my accountant. And I won't. I don't know how you're going to do that now because Ohio is now collecting online too. I'm not sure how it's going to work this year or this uh, the six month mark. So we'll have to see. You're going to see a lot of that too, Bob, on Shopify when I start doing the Shopify videos out here. Most of it's already done recording. I was literally waiting for my good camera to come back, and it is now. <clears throat> yeah, Joseph uh, Kenny. As I said, he's saying the same thing. If you list every day, you're going to sell every day. We're selling quite a good chunk of what we list the same day we listed. Obviously, I'm not listing as much because I have no employees other than the direct family right now. So I'm down a handful of employees, more than a handful, six people on some days. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm, my feed's like all over the place. Let's end it off this because I got a whole bunch more in here. I do apologize. Everybody who's watched the channel knows I go straight down. I try not to miss any questions as I do this. Um, I don't get to all the questions, but I do try. So I do apologize for that. Um, but we're going to send it off here. I do appreciate everybody coming on tonight. Hopefully that's some good ideas. Bolo video tomorrow. The final segment for the last Patreon video will be up tomorrow. For Patreon as well, there is an hour-long uh, live chat that I did just before this live show that you can re-watch for those who missed it. It was just as good as this was here uh, quality wise and how it played out so you will have to click on the just like you would watch one of the normal videos click on it and it'll bring you to the thing just like a standard video in there i will do some uh posts on when the next live patreon is up as well too so i do appreciate it and thank you all for coming on now let's switch this off here for you have a good evening <laughs>